All right, guys, thank you so much for joining this morning, Church Without Walls, man. Today's topic, is it God's will for us to be in debt? I'm a finance preacher, ERGJ, man. I try to do this. Seems like I'm, I'm going to be doing this every week. I don't know. Uh, but here's what I come to understand is that uh, many people just don't read the Bible. At the end of the day, uh, many people go to church, but they don't know God. And uh, and I think the reason why we are losing touch with God himself is because we decide not to read the Bible ourselves. And so today's show is really about getting into the Word uh, and going through some interpretation of um, um, going through some interpretation of what the Word says, getting your feedback as well about what we'll go through today, um, and then just kind of moving forward, man. Um, sometimes you just need to get around other people and have a conversation about the Word. Uh, this will be a time of uh, discipleship. This will be a time of empowerment. Uh, this would be a time just going in the word. The word says, where two or three or more gather in his name, there, is, there shall he be in, in the midst. So we know that as we're going through the word of God, man, hopefully um, some things will start to, some light bulbs will start to go off. We'll be able to answer this question personally for ourselves. Is it God's will for me to be in debt? Not for you, not for everyone else, but for me. Is it God's will for me to be in debt? And so I believe that there's a difference between God's will and my will. Again, God's will and my will. Is it God's will or is it my will for me to be in debt? Whether you're in debt or you're not, um, hopefully this will be a message that will resonate with you, um, that you'll be able to share with other people, and that you'll have some scriptural basis for whatever your decision is as it relates to signing your, your name on a dotted line to take on more debt, more debt. So as I like to do, um, I know most people, they start with most you know, they start with a prayer and all that, but I just like to start with the word. So we'll go to Psalm 1, just to kind of set the tone uh, for what we're going to be talking about today. How you guys doing? Hope you guys have a wonderful time. Enjoying your Sunday or Monday night or whatever part of the country. Where are you guys from? Can you, can you type your city or your country in the uh, comments below? Let me know where you're at. I am in the, on the East Coast in Atlanta, Georgia. Where are you guys at? So we go, Psalm 1. Psalm 1, this should be very familiar to you guys. It says, blessed, happy, fortunate, prosperous, and enviable is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of the sinner, nor sits down with a scornful godly. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and his law will he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree firmly planted by the streams of water that brings forth its fruit in its season, and his leaf also shall not wither. Not so are the wicked, which the wind drives away. Therefore, the wicked shall stand in judgment, nor the sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knows and is fully acquainted with the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. The way of the godly shall perish. Why would uh, debt have anything to do with some story? Well, I don't know if it has anything to do with some story. I don't know. I don't understand your question. Uh, we're talking about debt. We're talking about money as it relates to the Bible. Uh, and there's plenty that the Bible has to say about money. So when you ask why would debt have to be with some story, uh, have to do with some story, I guess it, it depends on whether you believe the Bible or not. Do you read the Bible? Is it a story that you have read? Okay, well, then you this probably wouldn't relate to uh, anything that you would understand. But, you know, we can go through it and, and hopefully it'll be something that you'll take away from it. Uh, and, and, and I understand this, Brad. Right? My, my, my block game is strong, so it's not a, a, a conversation that you want to participate in because it's easy to sit on the sidelines, but you can you can you can jump into a seat at any point in time. Because a lot of people like to hide behind the the you know like to hide behind the 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 the, 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 the internet. Um, and, and and as you saw with the guy who was just on it, they don't like the the, the, re, re, the people to recognize them. So they can just hide behind the internet and just type. So if you want to jump into a seat and have this conversation with me, show your face. Let's do it. Uh, but we got the Bible. Do you have one? Hopefully you can go through it with us. We just went through Psalm 1. Um, well, I, you know, like I said, hop into a seat. Uh, Robert, man, I know that you're here. Uh, Patrick, if you guys want to jump on, that's fine as well. Uh, join in on a conversation. Because this is a conversation, not a me show. It's a we show. Um, and so the question is, is it God's will for me to be in debt? Now, uh, uh, of course, it, for us to ask that question, that means that, one, we would uh, believe the Bible to be God's will or God's word. 
um, sent down to us for us to abide by its instruction. If you don't believe that, then uh, of course you wouldn't. This this subject wouldn't relate to you. Uh, but if you are a Christian, you're a person that says, "I believe in the Bible." Uh, you understand that the Bible has been around for two thousand some odd years, um, and, and that its principles they reign true in our lives. And we'll be able to see that um, as we go through some of the word today. Um, so you know, uh, wherever you are, uh, feel free to jump in on the conversation. Uh, so as I, you know, and, and the reason why I talk about this, guys, because I actually used the Bible uh, to uh, get out of debt. Um, it was something that the principles that are within it, I, I I read it, I took it for what it was, and I applied it to my life, and it actually helped me to get out of debt. It helped me to become, um, to, to get from under financial slavery. And so, of course, that's exactly where we're going to start in Proverbs chapter 22, verse 7. Proverbs chapter 22, verse 7. And uh, let me go on and move over there in my good old Bible. And I'm coming out of the uh, Amplified Bible. Proverbs 20, thank you so much, Robert. Proverbs 22, verse 7. It simply says this. It says, it says, the rich rule over the poor and the borrower is servant to the lender. The rich rule over the poor and the borrower is servant to the lender. Now, what we find in Proverbs is Proverbs is a book of wisdom. It's a book of uh, applied knowledge. Um, thought to be written by Solomon, the wisest man ever to roam the earth. Um, and these are uh, uh, applicable principles to our life. And so you got to ask yourself this right now. Do the rich rule over the poor right now in 2016? Do the rich rule over the poor? Now, why do I start in Proverbs? Because this is where I started when I took my journey. I said, you know what? I'm just going to read Proverbs. I'm going to read a proverb a day, and I'm going to see if these proverbs, if these principles rang true. And so now I'm giving you that same test. Right now, in 2016, I'm in America, wherever you are, I asked you guys to, to let me know where you guys are. Wherever you are, ask yourself this right now. Do the rich rule over the poor? Is that a true statement? Or do the poor rule over the rich? This is supposed to be some interaction going on here. <laughs> do the rich rule over the poor? You, you with me, uh, brave, wicked, in brave new kid? Uh, do the rich rule over the poor? I thought you were going to have some conversation with me. You're not a troll, right? Do the rich rule over the poor? Hey, Robert, what's going on, man? How you doing? Oh, he clicked out. So that's the first thing. Oh, he's coming back. That's the first thing I asked. Do the rich rule over the poor? Uh, because if this is a book of wisdom, if this is a book of truth, then... The principles they would they they reign not only today they would reign from then and then on they, they don't change right principles don't change so they they stand the test of time so back when this was written the rich ruled over the poor then I got to ask myself in 2016 do the rich still rule over the poor Robert you there yes sir I agree with you not agreeing with me this is the word <laughs> you know what I agree with the word man because that's better than agreeing with you it's it's <laughs> it works and I'm gonna just try to help you out and put the descriptions and stuff on the side, man. So I'm here with you. That's cool, man. So the rich rule over the poor. And we can see that in today's time. We can see um, that when you have money, when you're rich, uh, you, you make laws, um, you change laws, you pretty much run things. You own property, you own land, you, you make the rules and the businesses. Do the rich rule over the poor in 2016? Now, of course, this was written 2,000 years ago, and it still is true today. Then the today. second part of the scripture is um, the rich rule over the poor and the borrower is servant to the lender. So now you got to ask yourself in 2016, is the borrower still servant to the lender? In other words, when you borrow money, do you have to play by the person's rules from which you, you borrow the money from? Uh, if you get money from MasterCard, do you got to play by MasterCard's rules or do you make your own rules? When you borrow money to go to school, do you got to play by Fannie Mae's rules or by your own rules? When you get a car loan, do you have to play by uh, you know, GM's rules or by your rules? Do you make the rules when you borrow money or do you got to play by the rules for which you have lent the money from? Who's the master and who's the slave? Hmm. When you borrow money, who is the master and who is the slave? Now we have a, a, a you know a, 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 a young gentleman here with us who you know doesn't want to show his face, but he said, this is just a story. And I just asked, well, if this story is here, is the story true? Is the borrower servant to the lender? Now, of course, he's kind of quiet right now because I'm calling him out, but he wanted to get onto the show and didn't want to say anything. 
So he's saying that the story cannot be true. That's what he's typing in the comments below. He won't show his face, but he also won't ask the, answer the question, is the borrower servant to the lender? Is the borrower servant to the lender? Do the rich rule over the poor? He won't answer that question, uh, but we're going to just ignore him for right now because he's just going to kind of say what he wants to say and not actually engage in the conversation. Right. So here's the deal. Uh, this book was written uh, so long ago. What I did was I started looking through Proverbs. That's where I started. I just went through a proverb a day and I was like, man, is this true? And it turned out to be true. I said, is this true? It turned. I did a test of truth to the Bible. That's kind of how I got started in my draft. I said the same thing to Brave New Kid to say, oh, it's just a book. Oh, someone just wrote it. Oh, it's not true. But then when I started reading Proverbs, I started seeing that this stuff is still true. The stuff that was written back then is still true today. The rich still rule over the poor. The bar is still serving. So for me, I just did a test. And I would ask anybody else who doesn't read the Bible, who doesn't believe it, to try to test it out for yourself to see if it reigns true. And so we're talking about is it God's will for us to be a debt? So if we say that the borrower is servant to the lender and that the lender is the master and that the borrower is a slave, then you got to ask, does God want you to be a slave? I mean, is it God's will for you to be saved, to be a slave? Now, 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 from what we understand, Jesus has come so that we can be free, right? He's the truth and the truth shall set you free. Jesus has come so that we can have life and live life more abundantly. Now, I don't know how many people are living an abundant life being a slave to a lender. Living an abundant life being slave to a lender. Hey, Patrick, how are you? Morning, Pat. You're not coming in uh, uh, vocally. I'm sorry, can you hear me? There you go. Yeah, there you go. How are you? I'm doing phenomenal this morning. Good, good. You can feel free to jump in in the conversation. Anything you got to say, you know, I'm just going to go. You know how I do. I'm just going to go in. Well, I understand. And and the funny thing I find is that people that question stuff, if you actually ask them, have they actually read the book cover to cover? Even many, many members of the church have not actually read the book. I know. <laughs> so, That's why we're doing this show. It's like, it, you know, let's read the book. Yeah. So, I mean, any, every profession, every industry, every, you know, interest, if you're really involved, you actually read the book. Absolutely. I agree with you wholeheartedly. And, and, and so, you know, and, and hopefully this, this, hopefully what we're doing will help other people, man, to, to, to decide to read the book, um, you know, for, and, and that just really, that's kind of what bothered me, um, it, even in, in the church, like I'm going, you know, not to judge anyone, but. 20, 30 years of going to the church, you still haven't read the book. I, I, I didn't get it. I didn't understand it. Like, you know, we're, we're, we're relying on the interpretation of someone else to give us the word. Not that, they're, not that their interpretation is true, but they can only go through so much in an hour. And you got all week, all your life to go through and get everything that God has for you. So it just, you know, so I, I wanted to start the show just to really, obviously, I'm, I'm big into finance and big into money. Um, but, you know, so many people are still in debt and not even working on getting out of debt, but they go to church every week. And so my question is, is it, God, is it God's will for you to be in debt? And if you if you would say that, no, it's not his will for me to be in debt, then that means that it was your will to go into debt and it's your will to stay in the debt. And, and Evan, if I may, uh, and I got a feedback, but anyway, if I may, uh, that's a big problem because just like the young brother on the side, and we don't want to kill him because I've been in, in a place of, of uh, not knowing at one time as well. So the deal is this. Anytime you make a statement and just like your question today, there's an accountability piece. It's easy for me to just hate or troll or whatever the, the common term is now or to be a, a, a detractor. But see, like Pat is saying, I have an accountability piece to really understand and read. To, to, to make sure I have an opposing opinion. It's easy just to get on and say, well, you know, this is a story or this doesn't work. But like you're saying, 2000 years ago, whenever it was written, everything applies today. That question that you're asking. If you are borrowing from people, you are a servant, you are subject to their rules and their requirements. It's a fact. So that's just what it is. So a lot of people, weight, money, whatever's going wrong, it's easy for me to sit on the sideline 
and say, "Ooh, look at them." But just like this morning, you know, I'm, I got to drop 50 pounds, and, and that three miles was hectic on me. But I got to get up, and I got to go get it, right? Or I could sit back, like the Bible said, people having itching ears, looking for people that agree with where you are, and it will allow you to stay where you are and not move. So there's a fear piece in it as well. But to answer your question, no. Christ came so that you could be free. And a lot of people get sideways when you start talking about money, but money is a great topic because it affects all of us. And then once you could get free there, then you could start maturing, you know, Proverbs, great, great book, chapter four, verse seven, the beginning of wisdom, right? And this is an amplified, get skillful and godly wisdom. It is preeminent. And with all of your acquiring, with all you're getting, get an understanding. How? Actively seeking spiritual discernment maturity compression and logical interpretation so all those things cause you to have to do some work you have to invest you have to be a part of it so uh back to your uh, question about being in debt you have to actively be involved and in not being in debt and understanding what that is in the first place is this knowing that you are a servant when you are in debt Absolutely. And so I got a little, uh, I found something here. I thought it was very good to kind of read. I'm going to read it for you because we're talking about the rich rule over the poor and the borrower being slave to the lender. Uh, so it was like the above verse is so pertinent to you, to current events in the United States economy and the average American consumer right now. Here are some thoughts. Um, Proverbs 22 7 is direct and self explanatory. Whether we are living in the eighth century with Judea or in modern America, the lender will most likely charge interest or demand some sort of compensation. If we borrow something, we are now subject to the will of the lender and are forced to comply with their terms. So, so think about what that just said. When we borrow, we are subject to the will of the lender. If we're subject to the will of the lender, then we're no longer in that area subject to the will of God. That will, that contract has now superseded the will for which we say that we were gonna be following, or maybe we're, or, or maybe we're already under the will of the lender, Right. And then we're just now coming to understand and know God. So our, our hopefully our goal is to fall in line with God's will for every area of our life. And of course, today we're talking about money. Uh, but what other areas have we fallen subject to a lender? And, and when I say that, it could be a, it could be it could be a relationship that you're in. It could be a job that you are working, that you fall in subject to a lender that might be out of God's will for your life. So today we're talking about being in debt, but last week we talked about these different areas where you could be in debt, right? Where you're not giving honor to whom honor is due. You're not giving respect to whom respect is due. You're not paying your taxes to whom your taxes are due. You're not rendering your service unto whom render is due. So we talked about these different areas of debt, and the only debt that God wants you to have based on his word is the debt of love, loving one another. That's the only debt that God requires, that's a part of his will, is to owe no man anything but to love. So the debt of loving your brother, loving God, loving your parents, that's the debt that God is saying, that's the only debt I want you to have. So now we got to kind of inspect our life and ask ourselves, where if where am I in debt? Where am I, who am I indebted to? Yeah. Patrick, yeah. you got something to say? Well, and this this principle goes on beyond uh, money. We can be um, addicted and, and and indebted to things beyond finances, like you said, you know, love and all this other things. But even on a more personal level, uh, our, our our eating habits, uh, whether or not we're addicted to alcohol in an excess and things like that. I mean, a lot of times when people start learning, they realize I have to stop some of my habits because my body now is addicted and I'm indebted to this and I got to get out of that. So, I mean, principles go beyond specifics. Principles cover a wide range. And this right. principle of freeing yourself is not limited to just money. Yeah, discipline. Discipline is funny. When you start getting disciplined, it permeates, it, it, you can't encapsulate it just in working out. It, it, it goes into every area of your life. So like Pat is saying, and what you're saying, Evan, bondage, when you say slavery, I'm bound. And see, that bondage, that's what the Bible talks about. Like you said, that's that's 
what you prescribe to become free from debt. But I, I, I just, I'm sure you would say that that discipline and that practice that you applied for debt didn't just stop there. It goes into every other area. So yeah. money, uh, food, women, you know, whatever, right? Those are all symptoms of the of the root is bondage, slavery. Fantastic. And so we say that every time we pay interest, we are working for the lender. Mm. So every time you when, when you're paying interest, basically a part of all that you earn is someone else's to keep. I repeat that again. When you're paying interest, a part of all that you earn until that debt is paid off is someone else's to keep. Mm. In effect, becoming their slave. We work. We, we must work just to support that debt. Think about it. We have this debt, so now now it's like we got to do even more work to support the debt for which we've created. Is that God's will for your life? Hmm. Um, not only has the lender become the master in this regard, he or she is becoming wealthier at the same time. This one important way, this is one of one of the most important ways that the rich keep getting richer. And we're going to talk about this next week, how the rich keep getting richer. And that's a biblical concept that the rich keep richer, getting richer. Uh, but here's the thing. Those that are poor not only fail to make money work for them, but they are losing money or their net worth by paying out interest. One borrows when they want to spend more than they actually have. And a price, according to Proverbs, is servitude, is slavery, is bondage. So we've moved... Um, in this day and age from, from a lot of different types of slavery, right? We've seen physical slavery. Now we're starting to see financial slavery, economic slavery, and it's been around for a while, but now it's more prominent because it's one of the most prominent forms of slavery that we have. And then we, then we got to start getting past the mental slavery. We, we can talk about that, <laughs> but it's all about freeing the, your whole self, whether it be physically, mentally, emotionally, or financially, God has come so that you can be free. And the truth, God's word is what helps you to be free by renewing or transforming your mind. And so that moves us into Romans chapter 12, verse 2. Romans chapter 12, verse 2. Um, brave new kid, I'm going to answer that in just a second. Stay with me. I'm trying to move, move along, but I appreciate your questions. So my question for you, man, is are you still looking? You said you haven't found out yet. Um, are you still searching? So in Romans chapter 12, verse 2, it says, do not be conformed to this world or this age fashioned after and adapted to its external superficial customs, but be transformed or changed by the entire renewal of your mind, by its new ideas and its new attitude. This is the Amplified Bible, so that you may prove for yourself. This is important for you, brave new kids, so that you may prove for yourself what is good and acceptable and perfect will of God, even the thing which is good and acceptable and perfect in his sight for you. The reason why I came here is because when I think about do not be conformed to this world, most people are conformed to this world, right? What is the world's way? And I'm speaking from an American standpoint. I don't know where everybody is today, but is what is the world's way of dealing with money? The world's way of dealing with money is for you to live your life on credit, to build your life on credit, to go into debt, to get somewhere so that hopefully you can pay the debt off later. But most people die in debt financially. That's the world's way. America itself, $19 trillion in debt. They teach you how to be in debt. And then they tell you that you can leverage this debt. And some people call it good debt, bad debt, but the Bible tells us to stay out of debt. And then you can leverage this debt in order to grow. But you're not growing from a firm foundation. You're growing from below, below ground instead of being at ground zero. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Think about it. So, so the world is telling us to live on credit. The world is telling us to be in debt. The world is telling us that this is the way that you should go if you want to prosper, which is totally against what the Bible is saying for us to do in order to prosper. Your thoughts, gentlemen. Go ahead, Pat. I'll let you take this one. Well, it, it is amazing how we get in habits and over time we end up actually volunteering to enslave ourselves yeah. in, in so many things. Um, and part of the reason um, I kind of want to join this morning is because you're using the subject of slavery. And some people want to focus that based on Americans' history. And these texts go back long before America's history. Yeah. This, this has nothing to do with 
you know, the color of one's skin. The principles be, go beyond ages, go beyond time. And the mod, like you said, the modern slavery we are finding people getting themselves into, and they're volunteering for it, is financial. And it crosses all boundaries, it crosses all races, it crosses all economic levels. Uh, I run a service industry company on a, in the in the out in the real world, and it doesn't matter if I'm in a million dollar neighborhood or a very poor neighborhood. Most people are living paycheck to paycheck, and they may have a Lexus, but can't afford one more thing because <laughs> everything is leveraged and financed to death. It's really sad. And and Pat. I, uh, once again, I'm in a service industry as well in the real world, and you're right. So that is perfect what's being said today about the confirmation to the world. And then earlier when you talked about love, Valentine's Day, when you truly look at love and that that scripture that you used earlier, it says it superseded every law other than that, because true love gives and asks nothing in return. Right. So a lot of us are conforming to this world, looking at the eyeballs, all the trappings, the Lexuses, the cars, the stuff that looks wealthy, right? And it's a it's a satisfaction of the lust that you're bound to by your eyeballs. When in fact, like you said, if one thing goes wrong, you in trouble because you're leveraged to the hill. You're making 100000 a month, you're spending $100,001. You, you, you're you you poor, you, you're bound and slave. So uh, great points, man. And, and all of those things we have to keep in mind and, and like Evan is saying, myself as well, the Bible has helped me get out of debt and out of bondage in a lot of areas, including money. <clears throat> hey, Benedict, how are you? I see you are here. We see your camera. Are you working on some things? Hey, I'm trying to fix my camera. You're good. Your, your camera is on. You're looking in the wrong camera. <laughs> yeah, but I'm, I'm trying to fix it. And the camera should be, it should be here, but it's, it's, it's over here. Yeah. Oh, okay. Fantastic. So, uh, so, yeah, so we got, you know, do not be conformed to this world. And so it, it, it's almost as if, you know, we I think we 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 know this scripture. We've read the scripture. Many of us have read the scripture over and over and over again. But but then you got to ask yourself, am I renewing my mind every day mm -hmm. as it relates to whatever area? Obviously, we're talking about money today. But am I renewing my mind? Am I refreshing my mind? Um, with the word of God so that the word of God can help me transform from this carnal flesh that we live in into more of a spirit, more living in the spirit versus living in the flesh. And so it's a kind of important because, again, uh, not just, you know, like you said, Pat, everybody. And obviously I'm speaking more more to Christians because, you know, supposedly Christians are supposed to really be in the word, but they're still knee deep in debt. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, like. Like the ones that should be living the word supposedly are, are still conforming to the world instead of conforming to the word. And so you have to make a decision as a Christian or as somebody that might be picking up the Bible today as someone who's who's trying to determine whether the Bible is right for them. Are you going to be conformed to this world and, 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 and run by society standards and say, hey, this is how I'm supposed to live? Or are you going to conform to the word? I asked this question the other day in one of my um, in one of my talks. Is it possible for you to go to school debt free? Is it possible? Now the world will tell you that no, you got to go and borrow eighty thousand, hundred thousand dollars in order to get a higher education. But my question is, is it possible for you to go to school debt free? Is it possible for you to own a home or build a home debt free? Is it possible? Now the world will tell you that you got to get a thirty year mortgage. The world will tell you that you got to refinance and refinance and refinance so you can continue to make the mortgage companies rich. And you can be slave to another lender. But is it possible for you to get a home debt free? Is it possible for you to start small and upgrade and get it bigger and bigger as your family gets bigger? Is it possible? See, most people, they'll say that all things are possible. But when it comes to them, they won't think that it's possible for them. <laughs> so are you renewing your mind daily to say that, yes, it's possible. But not only is it possible, but it's possible for me. Because I can do, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. It's important that you say I though. I can do not that all things can be done, but I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And I think that's the missing piece. Sometimes when we're going through the word, we haven't made the word personal. 
we made it more for the church. It's, 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 a, it's something that we can say. It's something that we rehearse. It's something that we know and understand, but we haven't made it personal. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. All things are possible for me <laughs> because I love God and I've been called according to his word. Hey, Benedict, how are you, sir? Yeah, I'm good. I, I fixed up my camera. Cool, cool. You got some things to add to this conversation? Yes, yeah, so you're talking about um, college and finance, right? And how you can use, it's about talking to God in order to be financially successful. Is that it? Yeah, so we're talking about we're talking about money in the Bible. Uh, we're yeah. talking about the, the topic is, is it, is it God's will for us to be in debt? And so we're talking about obviously college and, and housing and going into debt. What are your thoughts on debt and your uh, thoughts on is yeah, it God's I think, will? I think as a student, you have to be willing to go into debt in order to get a education, really, especially at college because it's so expensive. Um, so it's, it's a risk, I guess. Um, but yeah, I think you have to be willing to take risks in order to try to better your life. But it's... It's quite sad in some cases. So I think some college degrees don't necessarily help you get jobs. So you should try to do degrees which will help. So let me ask you this, Benedict. You said that you think it's it's necessary for you to go in debt. Who taught you that? Um, it's just the way in which college uh, works and uh, university fees and that living right. cost. So, so it's the way in which the world works, right? Yeah. Right. So, so are you, I don't know where you stand. Are you, you know, are you, do you believe in the Bible? Do you read it? Is that something that, you know, so resonates I'm a, with you? Yeah, I'm a Christian. Um, I don't read it. I, I read it off, not that often. Sometimes I read it. Um, I guess I believe in God. Yeah. So when you hit a, when you hit a, when you hit a scripture, do not be conformed to this world. Does that get you to change your thoughts on, well, this is what the world says that I have to do. Versus here's some other things that I can do. I try, I try to do what I want to do and not be affected by other people. But I think in many cases you have to see what other people will think of your actions because that can affect how they view you and you need a lot of, a lot of trust in your life. So, whoa, hold on a second. So when you say that you need other people to view you so that you can have trust in your life, well, no, it's like if you, you need to be... You can't be completely honest all the time, I'd say. Like, you, you could try to be honest, but in society, there are many things in where if you're honest, people will be offended. So you should try to be, you should try to get on well with people. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so you should try, okay. You should try to get along with people. So we got a couple questions on the side. What does it say about uh, Bible and debt? It says that you owe no man nothing but love, which means to stay out of debt. It also says that the borrower is servant to the lender, which means that when you do take on debt, you become a, you willingly become a slave to the terms and conditions of your lender. Um, uh, Trent, I hope that helps you out. That's what we're talking about today. Uh, we've got a couple other things that we've gone through as well. Uh, go ahead, uh, Patrick. Um, as far as the, the college thing specifically, uh, it does take a little more work for you to accept the fact that you can ask the question, how can I do this without being in debt? And uh, getting to the point of being able to ask the question, you have to be able to accept the fact that it is possible for some, and then how can I be part of them? So for example, um, I have a daughter who decided that she wanted to go to school, so she did the research, and she now has two different associate's degrees uh, that the Indian nation found a way to pay her to go to school. And uh, one of them, uh, she was actually her, her freshman year uh, housed at the school. And they picked up the housing, the schooling, and they she even found a program that paid her, uh, as long as she was passing, paid her a little uh, cash, paid her a little money. And then she also volunteered at the school to earn a little more money. So... She found a way because she believed that it was possible to ask the question. Um, and then one of her roommates at that school uh, has gone on and found, after she finished her associate's degree, has found another college uh, and that they had a work program. And she worked at the college 
to pay her way through college. Um, and she had to reapply every quarter, and there was a lot of hoops to jump. But she found a way to do it without getting tremendously in debt. Yeah, I don't know. I think in the UK, because uh, I'm in London at the moment, I think where I am, it's very difficult to do that unless you have like a really good bursary. I think most students get into some debt, but there's a pretty good government scheme in terms of uh, student loans where if you don't, if you're not getting paid a certain amount, you don't have to pay them off. And so I think most people view it as something which they'll pay off in the end, but it, it's not like massive debt. I guess it's quite big. But they don't see it as such a big downfall that you shouldn't do university. Yeah, and I and like I totally more get it. As an investment I, yeah, I totally life. get it. Something yeah, some people say I see it as an investment. I totally get it. And so we're not uh the point of today's uh conversation is to do some renewing of the mind. Um I'm not here to tell you that, hey, you know, it's bad, it's a sin for you to be in a debt. That's not that's not what the word says at all. Um but what we're talking about is to try and hopefully change people's perspective as it relates to the decisions that they make revolving regarding the debt that they choose again that they choose because here's what happens right benedict most a lot of people especially in america they get these student debts right and they yeah. go for these college degrees and they call it an investment right but then 10 years later they're saying that how in the world could they charge me all of this for this school when they signed up for it 10 years before and then guess what they say hey i'm not going to pay it back or, I, you know, I don't owe this or this, you know, this is extortion, you know, how much they're charging for an education. But we we willingly signed up for it. And then later on, we're complaining about it. Yeah, yeah, that's our info. I think they should be accountable for their actions of signing up for it. They can't get away from it. They have to pay it. If they if they didn't want to do it, they shouldn't have done it or they should have chose a course which would help their life more, I guess. And, and I would say this, gentlemen, because Ben... You know, I don't know how you're, you are, but I have a 20 year old son. This is something else we have to realize. And since we're in the Bible, Luke chapter 14 simply says this another principle. Before you do anything, you need to consider uh, before a builder builds a house, he considers what's going to go into it. Right. So like you guys are saying, I'm 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 in a service business where we lend money and, and it might sound like a, a, a contradiction, but it's not. Uh, because people don't adhere to what they're talking about. But folks that come in my door, I tell them all the time, buy what you can afford. But like you're saying, Evan, a lot of people are led and want to be like the world and are bound to that that bondage of slavery. And they always exceed and go beyond what they can actually afford. Like you're saying, Pat, with the Internet today and public libraries, you can get any kind of education you want to, really, if you want to go that route. A lot of people back to my son, like I was telling him as his parent, you're not ready to go to college right now. High school was kind of difficult, not knocking education, but we went the junior college route. You can work, right? And pay for your education because anything you pay for, you uh, take, take it more seriously, right? So he's a kid, 20 years old, about to get a job, $50,000 a year, no debt, right? Cars paid for, now, he doesn't have a lot of the stuff that a lot of his peers has, but his peers' parents are in a lot of debt or they're in a lot of debt. So like you were saying, Ben, there's an accountability piece. If you're going to borrow money, consider the cost. Look at it from a business standpoint. If I'm investing A, is it going to result in, is it a good investment? Am I going to get in $100,000 worth of debt just because I wanted to go party and kick it at college because that's what everybody said it was to do, get a degree in uh you know, underwater jump roping. And then when it's time to pay it back, you know, it's everybody else's fault. So all those things come into play for me. Yeah. So, um, so it's pretty cool too, Patrick, because you said that um, one of the key things that you said about um, your, your daughter was that she did the three key things that the Bible keeps telling us to do. She asked, she seek, and she knocked. Ask and you'll receive, seek and you'll find, knock and the door will be open unto you. And so it, it, it begs us understanding what we would like to do, right? So if we said, like you said, first asking a question, man, do I, you know, is it possible for me, to, let's just use the same example, for me to go to school, get a higher education and come out debt free? Is it possible? If I ask myself that question, then I say, is it possible for me? Then I start to seek, I start to ask, and I start to knock for ways in which for it to come to fruition. So she seeks, she looked, she found. 
And things start coming her way as she was seeking that door, or that highway, or that road towards her education. Same way with anything else that we're looking for. Like and it's, it's funny, like like Robert, when we can't get approved for a loan, we find another way to get the car. When our credit is jacked up and we can't get what we want, what we say that we want, we find another way. But we don't go looking for that other way when we're able to sign for it and put it on credit. Right. Robert, go ahead. No, I would just say that that's the first. I, I tell people all the time not to take it off topic, but just, just buying houses. Most people go look for the house, right? That's that's cool if you're paying cash, right? But if you got to borrow it, the first place you should come is to a lender because the lender makes the rule. Right. And that's all you're saying. So because of being bound and not renewing our mind daily, being conformed to this world, prescribing to the matrix that's been put in front of us. Right. We get ourselves in a lot of bondage, a lot of slavery. And money is the money is the great thing because it's common to all of us. Right. And this is something once you can get that under wraps and the word of God, I don't know any other place. Right. And I like the way you said it earlier. I, I'm not here to to defend or to fight it. It's facts. Look at it. Look at the facts. And then like Pat said, pick up the book and read. Whatever you believe in, study it. Don't don't be somebody that's talking about what you heard. I'm not a what you heard type cat. I, I want to know for myself. Know for yourself, right? And then once you understand and consider the cost, seek, look, and ask. You'll be surprised what's available to you and guess what? Those are the people that aren't bound to a lot of things. People that are bound are convenience people, convenience store people. Let me run down the street and get it real quick. Joe Blow has it. But Joe Blow is charging you, they taxing you for it, right? And like you said, when you can't get that house and you can't get that car, whatever you need, there's somebody that say, oh, I got it for you. Don't worry about it. But guess what? <laughs> it's going to cost you. The devil is in the details. Pat, go ahead. Oh no, I'm just agreeing. I'm, I'm just agreeing with him because, uh, like I said, the the biggest problem I see in society today is they are they are lazy in their thinking. Woo! And, 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 and they, Pat, Pat, that's that's that point you're supposed to pause and repeat. I got to teach y'all about this public speaking thing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they're just lazy in their thinking, and and if you if you'll just pause and every time you have that issue, whether it's financial or anything say how can i instead of saying i need this you need to say how can i and ask like you said if you keep asking if you keep asking it the answer will come and you just need to have faith that if i ask and i let it be known and not only to myself but i confess to others this is what i'm asking for then it'll be given Sometimes you, it takes a little patience, and the, the thing is, we are not in a patient society. Everyone wants things instantly. But, you know, most of the uh, scriptures, if you read it, it talks about planting a seed and letting it grow. Mm. That means you have to allow time. That means you have to work on it mentally over time. It doesn't happen immediately. What happens immediately is somebody else's plan. And they've already have it planned for you, and it's at twenty eight percent interest. <laughs> <laughs> but you, but you can make two dollar monthly payments for the rest of your life. <laughs> We're gonna make it easy for you. <laughs> hey, baby, you got anything else to add, man? I'm, uh, I'm gonna have to let someone else get into your seat. You oh yeah, completely. I need, I need you guys soon anyway. Uh, but it's been nice. It's been nice talking to you. Hey, thanks so much, Benedict. Okay, see you. But yeah, so um, so as we talk about, man, we, we got into a, just kind of bring you guys up to speed, man. We started in Psalm 1, which is just really talking about, you know, uh, uh, blessed is the man. We like to kind of start there. And then we moved into Romans, uh, I mean, Proverbs chapter two, 22, verse 7, which says that the rich rule over the poor and the borrower is servant to the lender. Now, again, we started there because if you don't believe in the Bible and, that, and that's a principle in the Bible, then you got to ask yourself, well, do I at least believe in that principle? Is that still a principle that reigns true today? Do the rich still rule over the poor and are the borrowers still slaves to the lender? You know, yeah, it sounds like most of America. That's right. <laughs> Feel free to jump into a seat, uh, Mr. Closet or Carleen Jones or whoever. we got a seat open for you. So is the borrower still serving to the lender to this day from when the Bible was written? Is the, do the rich still rule over the poor to this day 
since the Bible was written. I would say so. Then we moved over into Romans chapter 12, verses 2, where we said, do not be conformed to this world, because the world is still operating the way that the world operates. You got to ask yourself, am I going to play the world's game or am I going to play the word's game? Let me repeat that again. Am I going to play the world's game or am I going to play the word's game? Because we know what the world has for you. We know how it's set up for you, right? To, 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 to get become 18, to go into debt, to start your life off in debt, and then try to find a way out of debt. But then while you're trying to find a way out of debt, you're going into more debt. You got to get the car. You got to get the house, right? You, you got you to gotta borrow for the furniture. The world is teaching you to borrow. The world, the word is teaching you to be a lender. Now we go over to go ahead, Robert. <laughs> well, just re just real quick, man, the, the, for the folks listening, watch this. And, and I I do this all the time with people. Quick example: say you got ten thousand dollars in cash, right? And say you need a car. We could buy a car physically, ten thousand dollars in cash. You'd be surprised at the number of people. And this is a trick of the. Uh, this is the system. You will finance the car more quickly or easily because it seems less uh it seems like you're not out of the money opposed to taking the ten thousand dollars that you have and paying for it you you gotta evan you're hitting on something you gotta we have to renew our mind because the tangible that's why debit cards and credit cards and things of that nature is a disconnect when you just swipe but if you take that same amount of money that ten thousand in cash you might say well you know what the car that i have is is, is okay the renewing part of the mind is very important. Stuff like this is awesome because you guys, we have to understand how the fight is, how you're going to fight the fight, right? You got to understand the enemy. And so the disconnect between my wallet and my brain, the system <laughs> is in place because they make stuff easier. They're, they're about to start going, you know, where you're paying on the phones. And there's, there's other conversations about that. But technically, when you look at young folks, the, the funnel, 13-year-olds to 39-year-olds, that's who's spending money. They don't have no money. How are they spending it? They're getting in debt, right? So we just have to understand the process. And like you're saying, Pat, when you plant a seed, when you plant an orange tree seed, it doesn't pop up overnight. It takes time. You have to wait. You have to be patient. The Bible says you shouldn't worry about anything but pray about everything. Quit being anxious. And in due time, what you're supposed to have will come if you're doing the right things. So, um, so as we move, kind of move, um, uh, and I'm agreeing with you, Brave. Brave saying that they choose to be poor, and I do a session every day at Monday, eight, uh, Monday through Saturday, eight o'clock, about how rich people think. And riches for 98, 95 to 98 percent of us is a choice. Now, there's some, uh, you know, circumstances that happen in life the same way it happened to Job uh, that could cause you to lose all of your wealth. Uh, but for most of us, it's a choice. And we have to choose daily um, to pick up our cross. We have to choose daily to do wise things with our money, the stuff that comes into our head. And most of us just are not choosing the, that wise way. Uh, so as we talk, as you mentioned, as you talked about, man, going into, um, you know, the way that the world is set up and, 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 and the borrower being servant to the lender, I think I want to drive this point home. If we go to Deuteronomy uh, chapter 15, verse 5 and 6, Deuteronomy chapter 15, verse 5 and 6. Here's why I think a lot of us are just messed up. And again, uh, many of us don't even read the Bible. We go to church every week, every Sunday, every Wednesday, but we don't have a word in us. It's just around us. If only you carefully listen to the voice of the Lord your God, to do watchfully all these commandments, which I command you this day. If you just listen, when the Lord your God, when he blesses you as he promised he would, then you shall lend to many nations and you shall not borrow. You shall mend to lend to many nations and you shall not borrow and you shall rule over many nations, but they not, shall not rule over you. If you'll listen. Now, he backs this up when we go to Deuteronomy chapter 28. He says the same, same thing. If you hearken unto the voice of the Lord, and we sing this song all the time. I'm blessed in the city. I'm blessed in the field. But that part of being blessed comes with us listening to what God says for us in our life. And, you know, and for everyone, it's individual. It's an individual impartation that God wants to speak to you about your finances, right? If you'll listen, right? And he says, if you'll listen, then you shall be a lender and not a borrower. And that's in Deuteronomy chapter 28. So then I ask myself when I go to church 
and I'm around people that say that they love God and they love his word, are you in a position? Are you even making progress towards becoming a lender? Or are you still a borrower and you still going and voluntarily signing up to borrow more? Hey, I got a new house. Okay, did you borrow for it? Hey, I got a new car. I'm blessed. Okay, did you pay for it in cash? Or are you still willingly being a slave to another lender when God says he wants to be your only master? Oh, I'm preaching today. <laughs> Yeah, you preach it, Evan. Look, the church is quiet. So, 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 so in um, in, in Deuteronomy chapter fifteen, it says again. It says, "If you will carefully listen to the voice of the Lord your God." So, ask yourself: Are you carefully listening to God when He blesses you, as He promised He would? So, He is going to bless you as He promised. But it's the, the, but the contingency is that you listen to Him. Then you shall lend to many nations, and you shall not borrow. But yet, even in this day and age, even in 2016, even after these words, we continue to read them over and over again. And they probably don't preach this this much in the church, quite honestly. I don't know. I don't really go to the church much no more because I decided I need to get into the word. I need to know God for myself. Um, and even this right now, what we're doing is church. It's us coming together, um, uh, you know, men and women of God, and discussing spiritual things. When he blesses you, as he promised he would, it's a promise that he is going to bless you. That blessing, part of that blessing is that you shall lend to many nations. Are you in a position right now in your life where you're lending, that you have a surplus, that you have you have profited, that you've doubled what he's given you, tripled what he's given you, quadrupled what he's given you? We can go to the parable of the talents. We're going to talk about that next week. That now you can lend to other people. And then you can begin to get that abundance from what you lend out. Because when you're a lender, you... Pay, they pay you interest. Now, of course, when they're paying you interest, you can't charge exorbitant interest because that, that goes against the Bible. Charging ex, you know, ex, extreme rates, that goes against the Bible. But yes, you are, as a lender, you charge people to borrow your money or borrow your resources or borrow your wealth so that hopefully they can make their life a little bit better and then they can make their lives into a place of being able to lend. Are you a lender? Are you a borrower? And the word says to me that being a lender is a blessing from God. Robert. Yeah, yeah. And, and and I disagree with uh Braven uh Wiz kids there. Yeah, yeah. You, you one or the other. Like my brother said, you either giving or you're taking. You're one or the other. So I think what you're saying, Evan, too, is, is important. And what I'd like to add is this: this is not about amassing a bunch of money. However, when you apply the word of God to your life, eventually you'll have a lot of money. It's just what it is. Now, the thing is what you do with it, because like you said, there's an accountability piece because you're saying that I answer to a higher power, a higher authority. There's accountability. So I'm not going to charge exorbitant, uh, exorbitant interest. When somebody comes to me in need because I love them, right? True love, expecting nothing in return, but I'm in the ability to help. I'm not a part of a social network like at church and stuff where we just talk about I'm blessed in this city, and you broke all the way through because you don't have no you can't repair the breach. There's no power in what you're saying. None. Because faith without works is dead. And you could judge a tree by the fruits that it bears. You see what I'm saying? So all of those scriptures and things of that nature have no power unless you apply. It. I deal with people all the time and folks think I live in this huge, humongous home. And it's no glory to me because the Lord had to renew my mind as I got in the word. And I live in a house that satisfies my family's needs. But as a result, I haven't been bound with all of the things that comes with the world system because I'm trying to impress Evan or I'm trying to impress Pat with your eyeballs. That's another thing we have to get out here, Evan. Folks have to stop being led by their eyes. And like you said, seeking, knocking and asking the spirit to lead and guide us into all truth. Patrick. Well, um, I, it's we have to remember we have to renew our minds. So we have to remember what we are thinking about. And if you're thinking about physical and the new car and the new house and not thinking about uh, the spiritual of how I can help, someone in the side comment said something to the effect that you can't be rich if you want to help people. And the opposite is true. You can have anything you want in this world if you help enough others get what they want. And the reality is 
every service company is based on the fact that they're helping others and those people are helping them financially. So everything in life and business is being of a servant and serving others, but not becoming enslaved to it. Patrick, you trying to get me to start talking about how, how people can get rich? I, I do this every day, guys. I, I talk to people about this every day. How do you get rich? You get rich by solving more problems and serving more people. And serving more people. And, so, and, and Jesus teaches us to ser- be of service, to serve people. Inherently, if you serve enough other people, you're going to get out of debt and you're going to live in a life of prosperity. It's just the the only difference between the rich and the poor is how many people are the rich people serving? All right. If you're serving one person, you're getting one person worth of wages. If you're selling serving 100 people, you're getting 100 100 people worth of wages. If you're selling 10 million people, you're getting 10 million people worth of wages. The Bible is clear, man. Be of service. If, if you focus on service and you focus on how can I serve more people in my business? How can I serve more people in my community? How can I serve more people in whatever it is that you do? Inherently, with what comes with that is going to be a return. That's a, that's a biblical principle. And we see it played out, the principle itself. Now, here's the thing about principles, guys. It can work whether you are righteous or wicked. It doesn't say, when we're talking in the Bible, it says anyone. It says anyone. It doesn't say you got to be righteous for this to work. It doesn't say you got to believe in God for this to work. It says this is a principle. It's a biblical principle that comes from God, and it works for anyone that applies it. Now, here's the deal. The wicked or the the, the rich or however you want to call them, whatever they are for you, they've learned how to apply these principles in their life. And the thing for most Christians is we have to learn how to apply how to apply them in our life if we truly believe that the wealth of the wicked is stored up for the righteous. Well, it's only stored up for the righteous who have developed the discipline and the principles in their life in order to manage the wealth of the wicked. But you see that scripture right there, Evan, what that allows you to do when you say that is that's no accountability, right? <laughs> you don't have to do anything. I could just keep saying it and I could be a victim. Just like the young brother is saying here, you know, sarcastically, but like you said, it rains on the just and the unjust. It don't matter if you believe it or not, man. And I know if you in debt, you serve it to the lender. And I, I don't have to say any scripture for that. It's just what it is. So what 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 what's going on is you have to come to a point, just like with anything, and most of the time people come to the end of the road, right, before you want to make a change. Today you have the opportunity, hopefully while things aren't bad for you, free education. Those two brothers just want a uh, pet. You raised the book. I know you talk about it all the time. That's the key. Help people. Gr- people that are in debt. They're, they're greedy people. All you think about is yourself. Woe is me. Go help somebody. Right. And then money, money today, you know, if they got rid of money and we were dealing with sheep and cows. Right. That's money. It's bartering. It's about people. See, when when folks uh, need some help about finances and things of that nature, Evan's got a network of folks. You don't have to charge them. People will come and say, hey, here, take this to help me, right? But the thing is, you could do it yourself. The principles are available to everybody. In, in Proverbs, it says wisdom cries out loud. It's out here. It's like these uh, phones that we're on, 2.4 gigahertz, 5 gig. They got all kinds of waves going. You can't see them. But see, when you get the right equipment and tune into them, you can hear what's going on, right? And then you can apply what's available to everybody if you choose to. But all I would say to folks is this, it don't matter, right? And you said something that I heard a couple of uh, uh, calls before, Evan, it's it's like this, it's like taxes. You cannot know the tax law, but mess around and and mess up on one of them, right? Your tax preparer isn't gonna come to bat for you, right? I see that a lot where people, you know, I just wanna return. Okay, when the IRS come a knocking, tax preparer ain't gonna be there to help you. And then what you're gonna say is, Oh, Evan did this for me. Well, I don't know about Evan. You're accountable for not either if you know the rules or if you don't know the rules. So ignorance is not always bliss. You got to be accountable for what you know and what you don't know. And that's not an easy thing to do. <clears throat> well, uh, and again, like I said, I, I, I keep going back to it starts in the mind. It starts in your thoughts and the way you start changing your thoughts is by feeding your mind different things. Uh, Philippians 4.8 
tells us whatever things are true is what you need to think about. It tells us what to think. It tells us what to think about. And none of those things is telling us to think about is a new house, the new car, the, the physical. Yeah, go, so ahead read that, be, go ahead and read that whole scripture, man. Uh, uh, Philippians 4.8. Um, finally, brothers, whatever things are true, whatever things are of serious concern, whatever things are righteous, whatever things are chaste, whatever things are lovable, whatever things are well spoken of, whatever virtue there is and whatever praiseworthy thing there is, continue considering these things. Now, now think about what, what, what Pat is saying right there, right? And what the word is saying. Again, this is the word of God. And he, he, God basically tells us to renew our mind, and then he tells us what to think about. What to think about. Right? But every day that we wake up, the world is giving us a different picture of what to think about. The, the, the world is telling us to think about murder. The world is telling us to think about racism. The world is telling us to think about, uh, you know, uh, you know, police brutality. The world is telling us to think about the political debate, whatever it is going on. This is the, the, think about the, what the world is trying to tell you to think about. And then now compare that to what the word is telling you to think about or telling us to think about. Are we going to conform to the world or are we going to conform form to the word? And, and I know everyone that I'm, we're talking to now is not a Christian. Everyone doesn't necessarily believe in the Bible, but we're, we're presenting some, 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 some statements, some truths, some scriptures from the Bible, and hopefully getting you to think about it. Like, man, I, I, maybe I didn't know this was in the Bible. Maybe this would make sense for me to think about things that are, that, are, that are lovely, to think about things that are worth respect or worth honor, to think about things that are true, to think about things that are pure. How pure is your mind? How and, pure is it? And we know, I know I know my mind has been contaminated. <laughs> I'm not, not going to act like it's. I, I know I have been contaminated. When I think about and when I just think about history, right? When I think about what I learned in school and history and what they taught me, and how I know about history as a whole, I know that I wasn't. I didn't learn the truth, right? I learned what they taught me. But now I have to un unravel, un reprogram all of that fake, false stuff and go and seek, ask, and knock for the truth. My mind has been contaminated for 25 years as it relates to money. No one ever told me that you could grow money. No one ever told me that you could, you could earn money more than just on your back 40 years for 40, 40, 40 hours for 40 years. No one ever told me that there was a different way, right? But now I see that, that other people have found other ways to serve more people, Mark Zuckerberg, to solve more problems, Oprah Winfrey. I, I see that other people have found another way. Yeah. And then regardless of if, if you believe, because I don't necessarily subscribe and, and believe all of the uh, the ethics, if you will, of some of these folks. But like you said, principles are principles. If I get on my house and jump off, gravity going to pull on me at nine point. Uh, 9.2 meters per second squared, 9.8 uh, meters per second squared. I'm falling off the roof. It's a principle, <laughs> right? So I would like to add to Matthew chapter 6, 22, amplified. It says the eye is the lamp of the body. So if your eye is clear, spiritually perceptive, your whole body will be full of light, right? But if your eye is bad, your whole body will be full of darkness, right? So if the light inside you, your inner, your heart, your conscience is dark, how terrible is the darkness? Or like they said, the blind leading the blind, everybody gonna fall in the ditch. So if I've been taught and I have fear of, you know, a different person's color skin, or these folks are gonna get me, these folks are gonna get me, or all of the negative stuff that's been programmed, then I get up daily and I used to work at a television station long ago. It's called programming. You you and, and it's on a script, man. They they telling you what you like, they telling you what you fear, they telling you all that. Go see for yourself, right? The Bible says, the Bible says, study to show yourself approved, so that you need not be ashamed, but you're a workman that rightly you understand you can rightly divide the word of truth, right? And you won't be tossed and turned by everything you see or hear. Because most of the things that we deal with are on fear. Back to Matthew. Matthew uh, 6 and 24 says, no one, and this is the key, no one could serve two masters, right? For either you're going to hate one and love the other. That's what it is. You have to determine who you're with, right? And so 
taking it away from the Bible, because like you said, I'm not a churchy person either, but you're right. You have to read the Bible. And the Bible is a great, uh, is, is the, the number one seller map for living this life, in my opinion, right? And I'm not hating on anybody else, but these are the things you have to determine, just like Brother Pat is saying, or Pat and Evan is saying, the scriptures are true. And everything that we're talking about, you could argue about the Bible, but take the word Bible away from it and act like it's in one of these books, because that's what a lot of people use. It's the scriptures, man. It's true and it's, a, it's, it's applicable and it's stood the test of time and uh, apply it, try it out. Right. Not only, not only is it one of the best maps, I would also say it's one of the best financial books you can ever read. Yes. Yeah. But go ahead, Pat. I know you had something to say. Well, um, back to everything is created twice, including wealth. It doesn't matter if it's a business plan. It doesn't matter if it's a physical item like a chair or a table. Someone created it first in their mind <laughs> and then had it manufactured in reality mm -hmm. or in physical. And the same is true with money and wealth. You first have to create it in your mind. And to create it in your mind, you must be making your mind anew. You must be reinventing your mind. You must be feeding it something other than what got you into the debt that you're in. And society has gotten you into the debt. What can you feed into your mind to change the way you look at things so you act differently when circumstances arrive. Wow. So you look at it and say, you know, I don't need to spend $40,000 on that truck. I can, I can drive a $10,000 truck. <laughs> so <'Cause, laughs> go ahead, Evan. I'm sorry. No, I'm going to go, I'm going to go in. So let me let you get in first. Cause I'm about to be in. <laughs> I was going to go be smart because look, those two vehicles, the $10,000 truck, the purpose is transportation. Does it get you to point A to point B and back? Right. That's all I was going to say. <laughs> OK, so 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 Patrick is bringing up a great point. I think it's important that we kind of talk about this. Right. Because not only is wealth, does wealth begin in the mind, but also debt begins in the mind. All right. So 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 if you got to ask yourself right now, if you are in debt or you've ever been in debt, whatever, how would you get there? Hmm. You first thought about the shiny object. Right now, that shiny man, this shiny object became more important than God. This shiny object became your idol that you wanted to go after. Right, this shiny object, you first thought about that. Then you thought about having it now. You didn't think about working for it. You didn't think about earning it. What you thought about is, I want to have it now. How can I have it now? Mm -hmm. But if we'd have thought, well, how can I earn it so that I can pay for it in cash? Or how can I have it where I don't have it? How can I pay for it now where it won't it won't it won't imp impact my future? Because that's basically what you're doing when you go into the debt. You're saying, well, I want something now that I'm gonna pay for later. So I'm gonna pay with my future earnings. I'm going to have an impact on my future earnings with something I'm going to get now. So instead of having the freedom with your future earnings, you're slaved with your future earnings because you wanted something now. So your thinking, our thinking, is what got us into debt. Right. But but what, what I'm trying what I'm trying to help us to understand is that the renewing of our mind with God's thinking, because it says God's ways are not our ways. God's thoughts are not our thoughts. Well, how can we begin to think like God? Well, the way we begin to think like God is by reading what God says, being of the word and not of the word. God says that, well, I want you to owe no man anything but love. So, yes, I do want you to have things. Because it says, if you seek ye first the kingdom of God and all these things shall be added unto you. So the things that you want, he also says he'll give you the desires of your heart. But he said that he'll give you the desires of your heart. Not that he'll lend you the desires of your heart. Let me read that again. He says that he will give you the desires of your heart. Not that he will lend you the desires of your heart. So can you be patient? Right? That's one of the, 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 the what is it, the... Uh, the, the fruits of the spirit, patience. Wow, wow. And we always say that patience is a virtue. Do you have that virtue in you? Can we develop that virtue? Because that virtue is developed with the seed. It's the seed that's implanted. We're implanting a seed today. And then we have to cultivate patience. We have to cultivate self-control. We got to, these are fruits. Fruits start from a root. So we first got to get the root in us. And then we can begin to develop that root. So not only is wealth begin in the mind, but also the debt that we have accrued will begin in the mind. And wherever we are right now financially, where we are 
as it relates to our relationship to God, wherever we are in our relationship to whomever, it all has to do with how we have been thinking from that point up until now. If you're in debt, it's because of how you have been thinking from that point up until now. Now, here's the great news. And here's the good news. We can change where we're going if we decide to change what we're thinking. We can change what we're thinking if we decide to put some new information into our in front of our eyes and in front of our, and into our ears. If you have ears to hear, let them listen. If you have eyes to see, let them see. Patrick, you know, I, <laughs> I can go in. I can go in all day. <laughs> Well, somebody in the side uh, bar put in a, another scripture, uh, Proverbs thirteen eleven. That was me. I was Pat. trying to find that. It, it, um, it, it basically, it basically, that was me, Pat. It just basically okay. says, Sorry. "Wealth from get rich schemes quickly disappears, but wealth from hard work grows over time." So, to that, to that point, I know it says wealth, but anything quick, you know, I want it now. Doesn't it doesn't last long? It's it's over quickly. But like you said, if you do it right over time, man, it's going to be lasting. It, it, it grows. That's all I was going to put there. Yeah, you, oh. yeah. Wealth, wealth, wealth is grown over time. Mm -hmm. like, I mean, real wealth is grown over time. And, and when we say wealth, again, it's not just monetary. Mm -hmm. If you want physical wealth, health, wealth and health in your body, and you're out of shape, you're not going to get in shape tomorrow. It's nope. going to be over time. If you have a relationship that is broken. And you need to repair that relationship. You want wealth in your relationship. Maybe you're going through some difficult times with your wife right now or your husband right now. Guess what? That relationship is going to be repaired over time so that you can have wealth in that relationship. It takes some work. It takes some time. It takes some patience. It takes some energy. But wealth is built over time. So, yes, we're, we're, we're talking about money, but the principles of the discipline that it takes in order for you to be wealthy in your wallet are the same principles that it takes for you to be wealthy in your health, wealthy in your relationships, and wealthy with your kids and all in the community. It's the same principles. And I would say that if you are lacking in any one of those disciplines, that discipline that you're lacking, it transfers into all the other areas of your life. It's not just that you're bad with money and, you know, and, and you're just bad with money. Whatever that discipline is that you lack as it relates to money, I would say you probably lack that same discipline as it relates to the other areas of your life. That's right. Correct. So, um, it, the, the, when we're talking about the Bible stuff, a lot of things is how do you apply that principle to you? And it comes down to people that are willing to do this get something other than what people who are not willing. And the principle really comes down to, and you can fill in the blank, the successful banker is willing to to do what the unsuccessful one's not willing to do. The successful lender is willing to lend and wait for the return, whereas the borrower isn't willing to wait. The borrower wants immediate satisfaction and they're willing to pay that extra in time. But the lender is willing to wait and reap the harvest over time. So it's not an immediate satisfaction thing. A lot of things in scripture uh talk about planting and waiting and harvesting later and we have to stop this immediate i want this so i want it now it's i want this so how will i work and get it how will i earn it how will i accumulate it not Patrick, Patrick, here's a good question to ask. It. when you want something to ask yourself this where is it going mm. <laughs> Where is it going? When you want that new TV, aren't they going to make another TV next year? Same, you know, same dynamic. Is going to be a better one next year when you can afford it? Where yeah. is it going? Yeah. yeah. Where is it going? Yeah. And so, man, Pat, you say something good, man. And one of the things that I, uh, one of my, I guess one of my speeches is that that um, patience pays and convenience costs. Mm. Patience mm. pays and convenience costs. Mm. Oh, that's good. Everything that you want convenient. Right. Because you could easily many of us know how to change our own oil. Right. And it would it would not cost us very much to change our own oil. But because we want it to get it done conveniently. Right. We go pay the twenty nine ninety nine to get our oil changed or whatever it is that you pay. Where it really will probably only cost you four dollars or five dollars to do it yourself. And that's OK. Right. There are certain things that we're willing to pay for 
because of convenience. But when we are willing to go into debt because of convenience versus paying something out of what we've earned and say, hey, I just don't have the time to do this. I don't want to make the time to do this. That's a whole different story because now not only are we paying out of our now, we're paying out of our future. I got to keep repeating that. Not only are you paying out of your now, and matter of fact, I would say, not only are you paying out of your future, you're stealing from the future of your children. You, you're not a giver, man. Like I said earlier, <laughs> when you say love, man, you know, not to get too churchy, but we're not talking about phileo. We're talking about agape, right? Expecting nothing in return. And love, that scripture means that you're willing to die for me, right? So most people hollering, they, you know, today they're around here front and buying stuff, you know, because uh, that's another uh, way for people to make a lot of money, right? It's just, it's a mindset. Pat, you you hitting it on, on the head. It all starts here. You have to remove, renew the mind to keep 21st century. We got to reboot. We got to reprogram. You know, you got to start reading the TOS is the terms of service. How many times you download an app and don't read the terms of service, right? And yeah. you don't know what it's doing. Just in Excel. Because the terms of service <laughs> is deep, right? I got <laughs> you, you got on You got on to me last night. But then the flip side of that, too, like you were telling the younger guy earlier, See, when you ask, I was on last night, I just asked the question. I got all kinds of resources for free, right? Because you have people that are willing to give, like you're saying. So there's all there's always an alternative, right? To If there's good, there's evil, right? You got to choose today which one you're going to be with, right? Because the Bible got to an answer for everything. I haven't found one problem, situation in my life that it couldn't answer, period. But you do have to ask. You got to ask. knock on the door. <laughs> yes, sir. You, you do have to ask. And, and that's the problem in our society. Instead of asking, how can I, they just say, I want. Give me. And it's like, sure, sign here, 28% interest. There's no accountability piece with but, that, though, Pat. But even that, even that, guys, even that, man, when we when we start thinking about I want, right, I, I'm a, I know for me, Growing up in the, I didn't even grow up in the church, but when I started going to church, the mentality was that all I have to do is tell God what I want. I, I didn't have to, I didn't necessarily have to ask God. I didn't have to necessarily have to seek his wisdom on how to acquire or get. I didn't have to follow any instructions. God became a genie in a bottle for most people. All I got to do is just, I can do, I can live life how I want, right? I don't have to listen. I don't have to abide. I don't have to obey. I can I can go to the club tonight. I can be on the stripper pole tonight and I can come to church tomorrow and I can say, God, forgive me. I know I shouldn't do that, but guess what? I'm going to do it next week. But I want you to bless me right now because I really need something. So we made we've turned this 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 idea of who God is into who we want God to be. And for many of us, we want God to be our Superman. We want God to come fly in. Save the day every time that I make a mistake or I, I or I do something dumb or stupid, but I don't want to change. And what God says is that repent, like it means go away from how you have been living and live the life that I want you to live. And we know that can take a process. And I'm not I'm not I'm not condemning anyone, but I'm just simply saying, ask yourself, am I am I am I willing to seek out who God really is for my life, or am I trying to make God be who I want Him to be? It's that matrix. And again, go ahead, go ahead, Pat. No, you go ahead, Pat. Well, I said, and, and again, how many people profess to be Christians or whatever faith they're in and have never actually they picked up the book. the book or only on Sunday they catch one or two scriptures that part of a talk or a lecture, but they don't actually they've never actually read the book cover to cover. You, I mean, how would you be a mechanic and not open the book? How would you be a dentist and not open the book? How would you be anything and not open the book how how can you call yourself such if you haven't read the textbook and what the implications of what you say of being a christian is this is what i say uh pat you're right uh because i was guilty of that as well because coming from a churched family you it's a, it's a game man it's a hustle you know people people been prophet lying over me you're gonna be a preacher just because i can put two sentences together man you're not going to put that on me, man, because God put something in me even in an early age. You know what? I'm going to have to answer for this foolishness. So I could go make money any kind of way, but I'm not going to use God's name to do it. I understood that. 
But a lot of people have that malaise, that programming that's been put on them to try to use the word of God. And then there's no accountability. Everything that you're saying, man, when I say, hey, it's time for me to get out of debt. Like you said, Evan, I got to get this piece of paper, write down my income and my expenses and something going to have to die. Right. We're going to have to make some changes. Right. I got to quit eating all that cake and stuff. I'm talking about I'm, I'm losing some weight. I got to do some exercise. Right. That's the accountability. When you look back at in the garden, Adam and Eve, Lord, God, it's that woman you gave. <laughs> you, you see what I'm saying? It's always a pass in the buck. But see, if I say I want to go to heaven, man, and this thing called Christendom. Right. You got to understand this is an individual sport. And if I'm going to have to give an account. Right. I need to understand what it is that I'm dealing with and quit following and everything that sounds good. You'd, you'd have Evan, you'd have a thousand people on here if you had three ways, three steps to, to get a zillion dollars, you know, and don't have to actually do any work. But yeah. you can see with the response when you call people and hold them accountable and say, hey, man, it's time for you to do something. I got people holding me accountable. It don't feel good. Convenience is comfortable. Man, I got to do that. I got to do this. I got to learn. I was trying to learn something last night, man. I still haven't gotten it, but I'm on that process. Like you were saying, nobody's being condemned where you are. But today, when you hear the word of the Lord, harden not your heart. Turn, repent, and make it's about your motives. And then once you do that, God says this. Every I know you can't do it, but that's why I'm here. I just needed you to surrender and let me run this thing for you. And all I need you to do is follow. <clears throat> So coming back to the uh, the topic, man, it, it, yeah. the title is, man, is is it God's will for us to be in debt? And that, mm -hmm. the reason why I put us, because it's something that individually you have to, you know, we have to answer for ourselves. Is it God's will for me to be in debt? And that's the question I want you to ask yourself today, uh, wherever you are. Uh, and so, so I think we presented a case. We presented some scripture from the world. We shared from our experience. Uh, but now you have to decide is it is it God's will for you, for I, for me? That's the question you need to ask yourself for me to be in debt. Whichever way that you believe, that's the way in which you'll go. You know, as you think of, so will you be. That's another principle from the Bible. So do you think that it's whatever's brought you to the place, if you're in debt now or you've been in debt, was it God's will that took you to debt or was it your will that took you to debt? Did you seek God before you took on that debt or did you seek your own advice? The world's way. Have you been doing things God's way or have you been doing things your way as it relates to the debts that you have acquired or the debts that you're thinking about acquiring? Is it God's will for me? That's the question I want you to answer. And of course, I'm asking it rhetorically because you may not want to put it in the chat, but it's something I want you to go away thinking about today on this Sunday. Is it, is it God's will for me to be in debt? And if you say that, no, it's not. If we presented a case enough for you today to say, you know what, I'm going to read on those scriptures. I'm going, I'm going to go back and I'm going to research this myself. I'm going to ask, I'm going to seek, and I'm going to knock to find out what God has to say for me. And hopefully, um, if you are in agreement with that, it's not God's will for you to be in debt that you'll begin to find out. You'll begin to ask God. You'll begin to get around like-minded people, people that can help you to move from out of debt to into wealth by applying the principles of God into your life. Patrick, any last words for the peeps? See you next Sunday. <laughs> you said no on to the creature. What's going on, Robert? Any last words for the peeps? That was quick, real quick and simple. <laughs> I said enough. I'm going to follow wisdom. I'll reiterate Mr. Pat's sentiments. Lord's willing, I'll see you next Sunday. Lord's willing, see you next Sunday. So this is Church Without Walls, man. We're going to do this next Sunday. Next week, next Sunday, we're going to get into the parable of the talents. And that's just going to follow up some of the things that we've been saying today. I'm going to present a case so strong for you out of the word. And I'm going to hopefully get you to read the word yourself, to divide the, the, the word of truth for yourself. So next week, we're going to be talking about the parable of the talents. We're going to find out who's really wicked and who's really righteous when it comes to them dealing with their money. Hey, this is your finance preacher, brother. E, want to say thanks so much for joining us today. Carly and Jones, you stayed with us the whole way. Brave the new kid. I know you don't believe, but I'm glad that you stuck in, and hopefully you'll be with us next Sunday as well. Um, Mr. David, oh, thanks so much for joining us. You just got here, but we'll be here next Sunday. And then also, Mr. Michael, I'm following you as well. Uh, thanks so much for tuning in. This is Church Without Walls, guys. Have a blessed Sunday, and let God lead the way.
We'll talk to you soon. <laughs> yeah, Sermon on the Mount.